So everyone, and with the first episode of the Mega Record anime, we also saw the opening of the anime right at the end of that episode. Now I'm going to go over some of the cool stuff that we saw in the opening, apart from some secrets that they sprinkled in. And some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about will be spoilers even for the North American Mega Record version. So if you're currently up to date with the North American Mega Record game, there's still going to be spoilers for that, so keep that in mind. But let's head right in. Starting off at the beginning of the opening, we see a cherry tree. And this is already a Japanese spoiler because this is probably, almost guaranteed, supposed to reference the 10,000 year Sakura. Now in the story towards, I think it's chapter 8, um, what happens is we see one of the rumors that the four friends Toka, Nemu, Ui and Iroha created and this is the rumor of the 10,000 year Sakura and this rumor says that the four of them will meet again under a Sakura that, uh, that blooms for 10,000 years. Um, there's also the guardian of the, uh, the of that rumor, the Uwasa of the 10,000 year Sakura, yeah names are a bit weird, which also appears in the game. And I'm pretty certain that is supposed to reference this, especially once we see what happens next, which is that uh, Iroha grabs for the falling petals and we see that she is uh, in that empty room. And since we know that the uh, 10,000 year Sakura rumor is supposed to say like, hey, the, all the four of those are going to meet again under that tree, the four of those includes Ui, meaning that we already see a hint that someday Iroha and Ui are gonna meet again because the rumor of the 10,000 year Sakura is gonna make it so. Next up after that, what we see is the title card, nothing too special. It looks very similar to the uh, title card that the Maraka Magica anime has used. And we're gonna see a bunch of other similarities here and there. Uh, but for now, after the title card is dropped, we see a little bit of a wipe and we see uh, like Iroha standing in front of the town and there's more pastel colors going around. We see these droplets hanging around in mid-air, which is also something that the uh, original uh, Maraka Magica anime did in the opening, so it more references to that. We also have this rather weird shot, just very quickly, of a car going by, where we see a bunch of Kyubei in a car going in, in the opposite direction from where Iroha is going. And I think this is just supposed to symbolize that all the Kyubeis are being kicked out of Kamehama for some reason, and the only thing that remains are the rumors and the Mokyu that runs around with Iroha that for some reason isn't affected by any of this. So we see a walk around and what we see then is it's going to start raining, uh, something that also happened in the opening for Madoka Maika. And more importantly, um, right after the rain happens, we see this these ominous characters in the background. And that character is the rumor spreader, the Uwasa son, I think is the name of it. And the rumor spreader, basically as the name implies, spreads rumors all around uh, the town, all around the city. and. I think kind of what they want to get at here is maybe that the only reason why it's raining was because the rumor spreader spread the rumor that it was gonna rain. Because that's kind of how rumors work in the game anyway. So we also see her running around with Mokyu and they run down some stairs in the background. We see a whole bunch of stuff and what we see in the background are certain enemy types. We see uh, the witch, uh, the bunny-eared witch I think it's called. Uh, the standing bunny ear witch, whatever, it's called Candy. We also see the minions of Candy right below that are called Harold. Then we also see the minions of the sheep witch Joseph. We also see the minions of the Shitori Egomo witch of happiness, Oscar. And we also see something that is neither a witch, nor a minion, nor anything like that, so it's kind of thrown in there, I guess, uh, which is the rumor of the misery owl. Uh, it's not a witch or a, uh, of anything else, it's a rumor, the witch of the, uh, the, the misery owl. Then next up we see Iroha is falling down in the rain and she gets picked up by her girlfriend and we are gonna see something like this, or rather we have already seen something like this in the original opening to Maraka Magica, where we see Mar Maraka run through the rain and right before that we saw Homura with an umbrella looking at the camera, which might imply he's looking for Maraka. So we already have this um, 
this idea that characters, the main character is running through the rain looking for the dry place and who has the dry place but the girlfriend. And so that's kind of a parallel right here. Next up we see a whole bunch of very quick shots. First off we see Tsurono uh, as her, in her waitress outfit for Banban Sai. Interestingly enough in the game she doesn't have a waitress outfit at all but I guess they decided that it would make sense for her to have that in the anime. And more importantly we see actually the logo of Banban Sai which is a pig. Very fitting because of course Tsurono's doppel is a piece of ham. So I guess that's where that connection comes from. The logo itself it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look very good either. I would give it 50 points. There's also a quick shot of the team Kamore. Uh, that's what people call it because it's Kaede, Momoko and Rena Kamore. That's what people call it. And team Kamore is having a claw game. And interestingly enough, this claw game looks very much like the claw game that we see in Nagisa's transformation in Magia record. It's definitely supposed to imply that it's the same. But what they get, uh, or what they're looking for here, is they're looking for these plush toys that look a bit like candy. The witch candy, I mean, not the candy that you eat. So they look a bit like the witch candy, and we also see that they, some of the other plush toys, they don't all look like rabbits. They also look a bit like bears, uh, which also has uh, a reference to something we saw in the opening for Maga Record, the game, where we see uh, the Magius the current Meg is at least standing on top of the hotel where we see a whole bunch of bears uh, littered around everywhere. So I assume that's supposed to uh, draw back to that as well. We then see Felicia sliding down some rails and the most important part is the background has a motif that looks like a cow because Felicia loves cows and that's basically the entire thing about that. We also see Sana with some cats because Sana loves cats. Wow. Then we see Mitama relaxing after a hard uh, day of work and people were like, Oh my god, she took off her she took off her shoes? You can take off your shoes after you've transformed? Like, yeah? Well, why wouldn't you be able to? I don't, I don't know. You don't magically untransform when you take off your shoes, what? Then we also see this very ominous looking shot of the Upelmagi Holy Quintet. Um, interestingly enough, I think that might kind of be a reference to one of the final shots in the Madoka Magica opening where we see Madoka and Homura sort of menacingly stare at each other at a very similar kind of lighting and even though it was very menacing looking in the original opening it looked like oh my god Homura is evil uh, but no of course not nothing really comes with that it just, it just happens to look like that um, and I'm not quite sure why exactly they did um, this sort of ominous feeling right here because they don't do anything evil, they're just the PMHQ, so I guess that's some stylistic shots, but I think, like I said, it might supposed to be a callback to that other scene. More importantly though, afterwards we see everyone's favorite crazy villain, Alina Grey, uh, standing next to one of her art pieces, which looks like just a bunch of dead stuff framed. If, in case you don't know uh, Alina yet, because for some reason you're watching this even though you have no idea what Michael record and you want to get spoiled by anything, uh, you can kind of see that Alina's a bit crazy because that's the kind of art that she likes to do. She also did art like making a time-lapse photography of skeletons to make it look like they're moving. She also likes to paint on skeletons. She once did uh, a painting where what she was painting with was the charcoal of burnt cadavers. She really loves macabre art. She absolutely loves that. Uh, then we see the transformation that we that I have to have in the opening, of course, at some point. And of course, as most people have pointed out, the transformation looks very, very similar to the transformation that uh, Maroka has, where um, while she's transforming, there's two of her, and then at the end, um, they sort of bonk heads and combine into the transformed character. Then we get the action shots of most of the characters using their magia, um, or at least a powerful attack. So we see Yachio doing what I assume is a variation of her Magia Absolute Rain. Uh, one interesting bit about the Yachio shot is that around the screen, around the edges, we see this weird effect that looks like the there's a shattered screen all around the edge of the uh, uh, shot that we see. And this is actually the same effect that we see and the edge of a uh, rumor or uwasa barriers that we see in the game as well and for example right here in the shot of the 
Uwasa of the Memory Shrine. Then we see uh, Tsurunou use Flame Walls right here. Something to note is that while Tsurunou does have Flame Walls, we see in the background the city of Kamehama at night. And then next up we have Felicia of Ultra Great Big Hammer where we see in the background the Memory Shrine from Chapter 3. Afterwards we then see Sana do basically nothing. The reason why we don't see Sana do her magia here is because her magia is Foltec Effectness, which in English means torture prison. And what that magia does is it shoots a whole bunch of torture tools that then completely massacre everything they come across. So that's probably not something that they wanted to put in the opening because it looked it would look kind of brutal to have someone who is so sweet and cute like Sana do that to someone. So they just go, okay. She just looks a bit cute and then Iroha appears, but more importantly, in the background, we see this trippy landscape that is the home of the uh, rumor of the anonymous AI, or Aichan, as fans call it. And the reason why this is here with Sana is not just that it's green and Sana is green, A, but also that this is also in chapter 4, where... Uh, Chapter 5, where they end up meeting Sana and end up rescuing Sana from, so it's also directly connected to her character. Instead though, we see then Yuroha spin around and use Strada Futuro into the camera. Whoever is behind the camera is probably dead by now. And then we see this shot of Ui just talking and saying something, but we can't hear it. Because Yuroha always has trouble understanding what Ui is actually trying to tell her. But then we see this a bit more abstract shot where we see a, a white bird fly across some uh, dark puddle. And I'm pretty certain that this bird is supposed to be Ui or a representation of Ui or Ui's memories. Because something similar also happened towards the very beginning of the opening of the Magreco opening the game. We also see a bird fly away from Iroha as Iroha looks or, uh, or tries to follow it and looks after it as it flies away and she looks kind of sad. So I'm pretty certain that it's supposed to be Oi or Oi's memories who fly away from Iroha and Iroha can't really follow at all. Now this shot actually has quite a big secret to it. So it looks like some scene, some very special scene from the game that we see in the side story of Madokami, of Ultimate Madoka. So in Ultimate Madoka's side story, what happens is Ultimate Madoka tells the audience that uh, the whole universe in which Magia Record plays is a completely weirdly odd universe that she cannot introduce the Law of Cycles to. So she says there in this universe, just like in any other universe, there is a version of Homura who is looping through time and what happened in this specific universe is that for some reason Homura during her time travels accidentally triggered a change and that change caused the entire events of Magia Record to unfold uh, because in any other timeline even in the Magia Record universe in any other timeline all of the main characters that we see in Magic Record, or at least the, the Magia's main characters, they're all, they all die in the hospital. So they're not even alive, but in this specific timeline, something happened. And it happened in this specific area that we see Iroha standing right now, where she finds Pebble-kun. And Pebble-kun, okay, that's this like pebble. Listen to me, that's this pebble and she accidentally stumbles over a pebble, or she sees the pebble, or something like that. And that somehow changes the timeline, because without the pebble, she takes a different path. And when she takes a different path, that kills the Magius, or at least it makes it so the Magius die later. But by now taking the different path, the chain of events happens, and Magius survive. And basically what I'm trying to say is, this entire scene right here tells us or shows us the exact moment where the timeline diverges. In the, like I said, in the story it's a pebble, in here it seems like the bird is supposedly doing it. So this might be the biggest secret of this entire opening, is that this right here is the scene where the Magia Record timeline diverges from the regular timeline and where Magia Record basically starts. What a big secret. 
then in the upcoming shot we then see again her running to her girlfriend in front of a dilapidated cinema. And something that I'm going to go out on a limb here is I'm going to say that the more we see of the anime with every single episode, as more and more characters get introduced, there's probably going to be more characters standing around in this shot because this shot looks very empty and you could very easily copy paste a whole bunch of characters into it. So I assume this is the shot where as the anime goes on, we're going to see more characters come in here. And then it pans up to the sky and we get the final shot of the entire city. And as we can see now, there are a whole bunch of references in the opening to either certain events that are going to happen or certain other characters, certain enemies. But on the whole, it's mostly a fairly simple uh, opening and it just basically shows a whole bunch of characters that are important to the story. But what we don't see, and this is something that I find rather interesting, in the opening for the game, they show the Magius quite a bit. They get their whole scene on top of the hotel and we see all of them. They all wink at the camera once and didn't really get anything like that in this opening. Even though the Magus are very much very relevant to the story of Mario Record. So it seems like maybe they're gonna... It could be possible that they don't want to show this entire Magia uh, story already in the opening. At least we get Alina. But apart from that, that they might want to say okay we're gonna maybe change the opening later maybe this is all for the second core where we're gonna go more into the magius arc but it might mean something it might not mean anything that they didn't really show magius off at all like toka for example is very important to the story so is nemu um, mifuyu as well the amane sisters all very important characters to the story and they don't get shown at all not even for a single frame i don't even see anything that could hint towards them like there's none of that in this entire opening that's it I don't, like i said i don't think it means much but who knows well that was that hope you guys enjoyed it if you like you want to see more leave a subscribe button and see you guys next time